is one of the things that happens after an election after this. Well, the Democrats have lost so badly. And, and you have, uh, we just read uh, what the uh, third way's statement was. Third way being the so-called centrist uh, Democrats, when in fact they're not particularly centrist, they're uh, really just more corporatist. Where they came out and said that they lost a lot of their favorite candidates last night. Whereas like folks like Franken, more left-leaning, Merkley, who months and months ago uh, people anticipated would have uh, much trouble in this election, did quite well. And so the message, the obvious message there, when you see across the country a sweep for uh, uh, minimum wage referendums and uh, legalizing of marijuana referendums and paid sick leave referendums and fracking, banning of fracking referendums, on and on across the board. When you see this, the message is quite clear. Democrats have to become more populist, more liberal, more progressive. Unless, of course, you're an establishment media figure. And in that instance, the message is always <laughs> got to tack more to the right. Here's Chris Matthews talking with Gene Robertson on MSNBC last night. To their interest divide. If all Reed wants to do is what McConnell wanted to do, was get it back. Uh -huh. If all yeah. he wants to right. do is get it back, people argue, I've read this, mm -hmm. that then you don't want to pass anything. Don't let Kelly Ayotte pass, get any credit. Well, exactly. Take and, the weak be, and of course he can do that. That's of course, more and more he, nothingness for the American right. people. And so if Harry Reid is the minority leader, he can block everything just like Mitch McConnell And did. what can the president do to challenge that? And make sure so we got to get something done, Harry. I'm sorry about losing the New Hampshire seat maybe in two years. Mm -hmm. It's better to get something done. Yeah, well, he's got to say that. And he's got to say it loud and he's got to say it often and he's got to, you know. Who wins? Well, look, you is he tough enough? Is your guy to tough force... enough to take on the Senate leadership and the House leadership and say, you know, because you know Nancy Pelosi's been a good team player, but you got to mm -hmm. stop being a little hard left here, and we got to get some things done here. Well, he's he's got to stop being a little hard left here. In other words, let's pass some awful legislation so that we can say we passed some legislation. Later in the program, just shortly after that, Chris Hayes made a, a great point, saying, why do you think the Republicans are going to want to do anything? Why do you think they're going to have any type of positive agenda? Yes, they'll chip away at EPA regulations. Yes, they'll chip away at Dodd-Frank. They'll try and chip away at the Affordable Care Act. But why in the world would anyone who has watched politics for the past 15 years, not, never mind the past six, assume that the Republicans who have now retaken the House and the Senate by doing nothing, by doing nothing but obstructing, why would anyone think that they're going to change their strategy and their tactics now? Any deal they make with Obama is still a deal they're making with Obama. How many Republicans were primaried who were accused of, being, of making deals with Obama? All of them. <laughs> People got primaried for saying nice things yes. about Obama. Like, he's a nice guy. Chris Christie is going on tour now looking for any excuse he can to criticize Obama because he hugged him during Hurricane Sandy. It is complete political ignorance, naivete at best, to say the Republicans have followed a strategy that has been wildly successful for them, and now they're going to do something different. Why would they? They've run against Obama, and they won big. They're going to continue to run against Obama. This is not to excuse the complete absence of an agenda from the Democrats. Or, if you like, an agenda by the establishment Democrats that runs contrary to the interests of most voters. However you want to express that. No, it simply says, this is an analysis of what 
Republican strategy is. And they're going to remain just as obstructionist. And frankly, from my perspective, that's still our best hope. Because any deal that President Obama is going to make with them is going to be completely antithetical, in my estimation, to any policy that's going to help this country. And to the extent that President Obama wants to do something like that, all you need to do is go back and look at the way that people talk about Clinton's welfare reform as if this was a successful public policy, which it was not. Dismal failure that became extremely clear during the financial crisis, the economic crisis. You can see how that still receives praise and why President Obama would look and see any deal I can cut with Republicans is going to help my legacy. Because you've got people like Chris Matthews out there who's going to say he's got something done. Ed Rendell is going to praise me. Third Way is going to praise me. Every member of the establishment will praise me.